Hello, my name is John Verlinden and welcome to my uh, kitchen in Brookline, Massachusetts. I'm a uh, personal party chef and uh, today uh, we're uh, going to uh, do some uh, spare ribs. These are, uh, uh, I specialize in Latin food, but these are really a merger of uh, Latin, Latin cuisine and the cuisine, cuisine I grew up with, which I grew up in Missouri and so it's a really uh, a very southern kind of style barbecue as well. The first thing we're going to do with our, our spare ribs, and I love spare ribs because uh, they're meaty and uh, uh, they've got uh, enough uh, uh, fat on them to, re to retain moisture. And we're going to begin with our ribs by preparing our rub. Uh, and this rub consists of sugar, salt, garlic, black pepper, cumin, chili powder, and a little tiny bit of cayenne pepper. And that's really, uh, I like things spicy, so I like cayenne pepper, but if it's something that, that, if you don't like spicy foods, then either reduce the amount of that or leave it out. And I'm just going to mix those together and then I'm going to apply it to my ribs. What I like to do is, uh, is uh, transfer this to an old spice jar. I've got an old uh, uh, jar of cumin here that I've, that I've used up and now it serves as my uh, jar for, for my spice mix. And so I'm uh, just going to put that in there. I'm probably not going to need all of this. That way it's, I've got it it's in an airtight container for future use. And I can also give me the opportunity to really shake that up and make sure those spices are mixed. So now I'm going to apply that to my ribs. Uh, and I, you know, I apply it pretty heavy all over the ribs. And I don't know about you, but rub to me means rub. So I rub it in to those ribs. And I'm going to turn it over on the other side and do the same thing. Liberal use of the spice, and then rub it in. These ribs are a couple of step process, but the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set those spices and really get them to, to infuse into the uh, uh, meat by putting them in the, in the oven at a very low temperature, only 250 degrees. I've got a whole head of garlic here, and I'm going to chop that up into, uh, uh, make it very fine, paste almost. Garlic is one of those uh, vegetables that the, uh, more, the smaller it is, the greater flavor that it gives. And uh, the, the least amount of cooking that the garlic has, the more uh, robust the flavor is. So we're going to just barely cook this garlic uh, with uh, the other ingredients. What I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm, as the best way to get this garlic in the condition I want it is to chop it and then press it to continue to repeat that, chopping and then pressing it. I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt to this and a half teaspoon of black pepper. And I'm going to mix that right in with the garlic. It serves two purposes. It really uh, en enhances the flavor, but it also soaks up all the juices uh, in the garlic and really uh, gives it a delicious flavor. All right, I've got a cup of extra virgin olive oil here, and I'm going to start warming that up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and and uh, put our oil in our uh, garlic in the oil. And we want to saute this uh, olive oil and garlic just until the olive till the garlic is tender. We don't want to overcook. It's very easy to overcook the garlic when it's small like this. And so we're going to keep an eye on this as we're cooking. And you'll begin to smell the aroma of the uh, olive oil and garlic. And to that, we're going to add, uh, that cooks a little bit, we're going to add one cup of uh, Naraja Agria. Naraja Agria is uh, bitter orange. And it's, a Seville, it's the juice of the Seville orange. And this uh, uh, is uh, available in most uh, uh, large supermarkets in the uh, international food section 
or in a Hispanic, Hispanic market. Now if you can't find that, you can make a really good substitute, uh, just uh, equal parts of orange, sweet orange juice and, uh, and, le and lime juice. Makes a uh, really good substitute. So uh, you can see the, uh, the garlic is uh, boiling in the oil there. I can feel it's uh, kind of softening up with my, my spoon. And I don't want to overcook this because uh, I really want to preserve that strong garlic flavor with this. So I'm going to add my uh, orange juice now. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring this whole dish to a, to a boil. And once it reaches a boil, it's done and we're ready to go. All right, our ribs are done and they've had a chance to cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them apart so that our marinade has an opportunity to really get in to the, the meat and uh, give it that wonderful flavor. We're going to marinate these in our mojo criollo and uh, I like to marinate in a plastic bag uh, simply because it takes less space uh, in the refrigerator and it molds right around the food. But you can use anything uh, uh, to marinate in that is uh, non-corrosive. Non uh, so uh, stainless steel, glass, plastic, all work good. Just avoid aluminum or pewter as those uh, uh, do corrode. Uh, the the uh, acid uh, in the moho would uh, uh, impact them as it would react to them. Give it a couple of ladles of uh, moho criollo. My other ribs in on top. And that's it. Those are going to go into uh, the refrigerator overnight and then uh, onto the grill for uh, our, P our fiesta. Okay, our ribs have had a chance to marinate overnight and uh, now we're ready to put them on the grill. I love charcoal and so uh, that's what we're using today, but if you have a uh, uh, gas grill at home, that'll work just fine as well. And uh, just uh, we're just finishing the uh, the uh, ribs on the grill. They, they, as you recall, had a chance to uh, bake in the oven for about an hour, and then they've been in the uh, uh, marinade for overnight. So the marinade also has a uh, an impact on the ribs in terms of tenderizing them. So what I'm going to do uh, now is uh, baste our uh, ribs with uh, barbecue sauce. These are probably just going to need a few a couple of minutes on each side is all because they're they're basically done we're just finishing them uh, want to get some grill marks on them and uh, give it an uh, opportunity for that uh, sauce to be caramelized on them a little bit oh and look they're just about ready Cuban, Missouri, ribs. Enjoy.